Hey, I'm Jonathan Corbla, Trivia Genius, and welcome to So Booking Cool, the greatest podcast you've ever heard. Welcome to So Booking Cool, it's Jewel B. Today's guest is an American game show competitor and United States Chess Federation expert chess player, as well as coach. He has won the likes of Will of Fortune, The Chase, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and Jeopardy. And I'm sure you've seen him on the new original series, Best Ever Trivia Show. He is Jonathan Korbla. Hi, Jewel. How are you? Hi. I'm, I'm great. I'm really thrilled to talk to you today, Jonathan. And I see that you're a New Yorker as well. Yes, yes. Born and raised in Brooklyn, New York City. Still live there. Yes. Represent for the BK. And right. tell us about um, you being in middle school and how, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? made its way, like, into your life? Well, I suppose the show started when I was in fifth or sixth grade, and they were looking for contestants. And the uh, producers, uh, it was three producers who came to my school, my middle school, and the teachers pulled a few kids out of class. We didn't know if we were in trouble or what, but we went, you know, down to uh, the main office, and we started to get interviewed, and they were like, uh, do you know where Australia is on this map? And some of us were like, yeah, sure. And I was like, yeah, I know where South Africa is. Of course I know where Argentina is. I just kept And they were like, cool. And they like, asked me what I like to do and stuff. And I was smiling and happy. And before I knew it, I got to go on the show. Wow. And geography is your favorite trivia category, right? I mean, I'm, I'm a generalist. I love all categories. But mm -hmm. geography is definitely my first love, especially political geography in terms of, you know, cities, capitals, countries, rivers, lakes, uh, that sort of thing. You know, there's a wide range of topography and typography and lateral moraines, etc. But, you know, especially the things that you would see on a trivia show, like, you know, you know that kind of thing just sticks in my brain for some reason. Mm -hmm. So were game shows popular in your household coming up? Oh, absolutely. I uh, love uh, shows when I was a kid. In fact, I would love to stay home from school so I could watch Price Right and Password and, you know, love connection, all kinds of stuff, family feud. And, uh, you know, my brother and I, we would, after dinner and after watching the news, our parents would let us watch Jeopardy. And it was a huge thing in my house because my brother and I are so competitive. I just wanted to beat him. Even though he's six years older than me, I wanted to beat him. <laughs> and one of the things that happened was we would keep track of our scores and argue with each other, and I would always try to find out more stuff. And I remember one point, my brother didn't know the answer, but neither did the three Jeopardy contestants either, but I did. And I just, it's such a good memory for me, for my youth, because it was the moment that I realized, you know, maybe this is possible. You know, if I got this right and they didn't, you know. So who was one of the first people who encouraged you that, yes, this is possible and you should pursue going on a game show? Ooh, well, I mean, I would say because I had that early opportunity, it always mm -hmm. seemed like a relatively possible pursuit. Uh, my, I had an uncle, uh, Uncle Pre, who always called me the professor, and, you know, just kind of some general encouragement in terms of intellectual pursuits was really helpful for me when I was young. And what kind of board games are you into? I mean, if you name it, I'll play it. Uh, I, I suppose I don't play a lot of the really new sort of fantasy type of games or like Pepper Zones or, you know, Pandemics, but all the classics, the ones that have been around for, let's say, over 70 years, over 100 years. So, you know, chess, checkers, backgammon, oh. um, I love Scrabble, and I'm you know, highly effective and efficient at all those games, I would say. And when did you feel like you started to get really good at playing chess? Well, the last person I played a lot of games with is named Magnus Carlsen, and if your listeners don't know, that's uh, the current world chess champion, and he kicked my butt very badly, so me feeling good and bad about my chess is, is relative to whether I most recently won or lost. But oh. I am in the top, you know, two percent of chess players. But I have a growth mindset about it, about almost everything that I do, and I, I just definitely feel very accomplished in terms of the fact that I know I can beat, you know, almost everybody I play. I mean, at a certain point, I'll sit in the park 
And I say to people, listen, if I don't know who you are, there's not much chance that you're going to beat me. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it, it is humbling from time to time when I sit across from a grandmaster and they crush me. Um, I suppose I started to get very, very good at chess when I was in high school. I would, you know, leave school, do my homework, do a quick shop. Let's say I was working at McDonald's or a supermarket. And then I would spend the rest of my night in the park playing chess with hustlers and dumbs. And I would read books when I lost and I would count my money when I won. Are there any misconceptions, Jonathan, about chess? Well, one of the most common things that you'll hear when people talk about chess is when they make a kind of political allegory about it. When they say, oh, they're playing chess, not checkers, or, oh man, he's, he's really a a chess player. The, the thing about it is, like almost any other game or any other pursuit, you get really, really good at chess by just spending tons of time at it. And it's not really that much of lateral thinking, rather it's of study and, and practice. So the you know, when people use those metaphors, I would mm-hmm. say that's probably the biggest misunderstanding that people have about chess. It's almost anyone can get really good at it if they do enough work and put enough time into it. And what is it about chess overall that you enjoy so much, Jonathan? Naturally, I would say I'm drawn to those things that have the, the reputation for, uh, I suppose people just consider them smart. So it's always been really fun for me to be great at chess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I often hear like people think really highly of people who play chess and that they're very intellectual. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, it's, it's, you know, in those kind of, uh, in that Venn diagram of smart activity, I think. But, I mean, chess is also a beautiful and amazing game. So, Jonathan, what advice can you give people who go on, on game shows? Well, first I would say that I have to give them advice to get on the game show in, in the beginning. I think that's really the hardest part. I mean, the people who get chosen for game shows must already know something, right? But... But the secret is getting on in the first place. And for each game show, it's a little bit different. You know, you can sort of take a look at the standard, which is Jeopardy, the, you know, general show of trivia, and Alex Trebek. And they have a long, several months long process of getting on the show, starting with a 50 question online test, followed by a 50 question in person test, followed by, you know, interviews and auditions followed by mock games and then another test and then a random pool. For all those things, you need resilience. I mean, uh, great Jeopardy champion, DJ Ball say, he tried out for Jeopardy something like 11 times before he got off. I myself tried out nine times. So, you know, you can't just fail and think that it's not for you. For these game shows, most of them, I mean, I've been on 13 of them. If I had been on every single game show that I tried out for, I'd be on more than 30 by now. I usually fail. But, you know, if you really like it and you're interested in giving it a shot. Wow, that's so compelling, Jonathan. Do you have a favorite game show that you've been on, by the way? Oh, wow. Um, I would always like to say the next one, but the truth is, <laughs> uh, you know, this show I'm on right now, the best ever trivia show, mm-hmm. is fantastic. It's such a different feeling for me because rather than being a contestant, I am an expert. You know, I'm, I'm there for good. I'm like one of Barker's beauty. I'm like Vanna White. Right. I, I show up every week and frankly, whether I win or lose, I get to come back. I get to win. It's fantastic. Um, so yeah, this yeah. is a really interesting, new, exciting, fun experience for me. But, you know, before this show probably was definitely. Mm hmm. Yeah, so what was your reaction when you found out that you landed the best ever trivia show? Do you remember where you where you were? Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I it, was a, it was a process. I was getting, uh, you know, lots of phone calls. I went back and forth to California to audition. I, uh, you know, I'm certain, but I had a good feeling about it. And, mm-hmm. you know, even for the last audition, I would say there were something about, 25 of us trying to be experts and in the end 8 of us were chosen so I looked around and I thought you know I'm doing my thing I suppose I kind of am one of those envision the future kind of guys so from the beginning of any process if there's a positive result 
I almost always am picturing that, I suppose. It's, it's, it's hard to even articulate, but just from the beginning, I kind of knew I was going to be on the show. Wow, so that, so that good that good energy. Yeah, it's manifesting. Mm hmm. Manifestation. Yeah. So, do you believe in that, Jonathan? Oh, I'm here on the phone with you. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess. Yeah. It, it, it works out from time to time. And the, the funny thing is, you know, even when it doesn't, even when, you know, you think something is in your way, if you're, as I said, resilient and persistent. And as you said, like, it's not, it's not easy to get on these game shows. There is a, a whole long process and obviously there's a, there's a talent factor. But with all of that, what kept you motivated? Even in the past when you were rejected before, like, what kept you motivated? Well, the weird thing is a lot of game shows are kind of, you know, one versus 100 or, the deal or no deal. I mean, they're not still on the air. You know, the weakest link was huge in terms of its yeah. pop culture relevancy. And then before you know it, like, the season is gone. Most shows maybe only have a pilot in six or seven episodes. So for me, a lot of the shows that I try out for, at least, you know, not the venerable ones that you've already heard of, but the ones that you've never heard of, I'm trying out for those shows before they use air to steal episode. You know, they're still beta testing and sort of workshopping and focus grouping these shows and they're calling people in who could be possible contestants and I'm showing up right away and you know every now and again this show changes it might turn into a different show it might never air they might tape something that they never use but you know the thing that keeps me going is it's like a bus you know I might miss this one another one's gonna come <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, working on my yeah. game. Wow, that that's an awesome mentality to have. Can you what can you tell us about the the audition process at all? The audition process for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, for instance, I went. I took maybe a sixty question multiple choice test. I did one really short, two or three minute interview where they asked me a few questions, and five days later, I was in the hot seat with Meredith. As opposed to a show like 500 Questions on ABC, I probably did two months worth of auditions. I took, I did maybe ten, eight to ten tests. You know, it's, it's a random process and, you know, you never know, but it's fun to see kind of behind the, the curtain of the like, TV productions are made. Generally, you know, a few tests, a few interviews, sometimes some mock games, and then you're off to the races. What do you think makes a good game show? It's like the dream factor. You know, you have to sort of put the person at home in the same shoes as the person on that stage, you know, sort of so that their highs and their lows are equally suffered with the, the home audience. And it's not easy to do. So, you know, trivia shows, as uplifting as they are in terms of opening or, you know, preparing dinner and game shows on, they want to kind of laugh at the person's failure, sometimes they want to, uh, you know, yell at a person going for it, and then the ver So there's that kind of superiority theory, too, where it comes to game shows. I would say a perfect game has a little bit of and, mm. you know, stakes, you know, danger, uh, people who really love life-changing amounts of money. I would say in the late 90s and early 2000s, especially when who wants to be a millionaire came on the scene, it hyper accelerated that specific variable. And then people realized that's not all it takes. You know, I mean, our show is a fun, it's a living room kind of feeling. Win up $30,000 on mm -hmm. my show. Yeah. But it has kind of like a collegial, fun sort of, oh, I might learn something and have a few laps along the way. So, you know, and game shows change and grow and evolve and hopefully more game shows end up becoming like the best ever trivia show where it's just kind of the love of learning and the fun of I don't know camaraderie Jonathan Korbla everyone Jonathan thank you so much for talking to So Booking Cool today it was such a pleasure to speak with you and let everyone know how they can keep up with you as well as make sure that they're keeping up with best ever trivia show and and yeah, just plug, plug whatever there is to plug. 
Um, definitely. I'm super excited for the second season of Best Ever Trivia Show. It's still airing weekdays. Uh, check your local listings on the Game Show Network. The Best Ever Trivia Show, starring myself, yours truly, Jonathan Cordwell. Um, and yeah, you'll be seeing me, though they posted a lot on the Game Show Network on Instagram and Game Show Network on Facebook. And you know, you can find me if you look hard enough. Yes. All right. If you look hard enough. Thank you so much to all the listeners. And until next time, so booking cool. Hey, I'm Jonathan Corbla, trivia genius. And welcome to So Booking Cool, the greatest podcast you've ever heard.